YouTube. This is Rusty from Possum Bayou. I've been wanting to, I've done this, I've recorded these videos that I'm putting in these different parts of this design preservation build. I think it was Easter weekend. I found out this week that my father was terminally ill. He's going to be passing away probably pretty soon. I'm not real sure when. Plus, my daughter graduated from college this week. It's been some good and some bad this week. It's kind of sad I'm going to be losing my dad, but it's, the cancer's kind of gotten to, it's progressed and it's gotten into his brain. And there's also an aneurysm there, but they, due to some other stents and places he's had with aneurysms in his abdomen and kidneys. Last year, there's really not much they can do with that, and chemotherapy is the only other option for the other thing to get that out of the way so they can do something with the other thing. Uh, my dad doesn't really want to go with, through any more of this. He's in his 80s. And it, basically, long story short, his body's just kind of wearing out, even with the cancer. Anyway, good news was my daughter graduated from Mississippi State uh, this weekend. She, uh, she graduated. She had all A's uh, through her whole career in college, so that's pretty good. Good for her. Proud papa for that. But anyway, here's this video coming up that I have. It's going to be part one. It's going to be mostly, nah, I guess you'd call it an unboxing, even though it's in a little plastic bag, these design preservation kits, the way they are. And it's just mostly me cleaning the thing up and labeling everything so it's kind of less confusing when you start putting this thing together. Now, here's the video. Here's the instruction booklet that come out of the kit the grips luggage design preservation I mean in reality there's a little bit of lacking in the instructions uh, some of these pieces right down here don't exactly look like the parts in in the kit plus the numbers don't quite match up with what's going here so what I'm gonna do is take a sharpie and on the back of the pieces, I'm going to write these numbers down. But there's also something in here. There's a couple of pieces in here that said a, was molded at a bevel so they would come out of the mold better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take those as well and sand those down. I'll make a sanding block <clears throat> to sit here on my little table and, and do that. You see, my little table here is just, I'm sitting outside enjoying the, enjoying the morning on my carport with a little makeshift table. You know, I got a little overspray from some other projects, but I'm going to go on to number the pieces and come back. All right, here's some of the pieces I wrote on the back with a Sharpie, the piece numbers that they were that was listed in the instructions. And it did saying the instructions which one of these had this beveled end and that's the ones i wrote sand on now they beveled these things to where they could pop out of the mold easier but there's some of the other pieces that have a slight bevel on the end but they have the brick detail and the beveled end ones go against this side here. That's why they have to be straight. If you have that beveled, you'll have that gap on the end. First time I built one of these buildings years ago, I didn't realize that. And I was like, why does that look like? Why have I got this gap along that, that, that corner seam? And the tool I got right here, I'm going to cut these pieces of flashing off. This is pretty thick stuff, and it's rosin, so I'm going to have to... I use these to cut that off. I picked these up at Harbor Freight, and they, I actually cut Code 55 rail with them too. So, and they cut stuff off of sprues. These been a pretty handy little tool for no more. They were less than seven bucks, I think, with one of the coupons I had. I was like, hey, I'm gonna get those. I also kind of use some of these trimming, but like I said, I cut my thumb with this thing a minute ago. But the only way to use this is to lay that flat and to to cut them. But this with them being thick, this is the easiest way to go. Then I got a block of wood with some 
180 sandpaper. The instructions called for 120, but I didn't have any. And, uh, just going to use what I got here. I also got this little sanding block too, but it's a little finer grit than that. But that's just to kind of get the finer edges. But I'm going to have to also sand the areas where these are cut off because it with these little cutters, it leaves just a little bit of a bump there. It's pretty easy to sand it all off, but but here's the other parts in it. You got the roof in there, and if you look, we have these little square pieces of styrene. And what you do with these, you cut them off and you glue them along the top to support of the plastic roof. It also has a piece of stock in here. Just dump the whole thing out. Let you get a few pieces. Also, this little thing will cut it in half and use it for some stove pipes or whatever on this thing. So right now I'm going to go ahead and nip some of these off. I'd actually nipped one off earlier, but let's see here. The tripod's in the house and I've got a camera, but I can't seem to find the charger for the camera. Basically, it's kind of cut that off smooth like I said you'll have like a little bit of a rough edge right there on that and it'll take just a little bit of sandpaper to sand it off that's why I got the block to keep it straight I'm gonna go off camera now and sand these things out here's basically how I got this set up I got my sandpaper here and I got this block I'm gonna do this one hand basically you hold these I've been holding these pieces up Slice for that block and just go back and forth, actually faster than that. And I get that nice, closer to 90 degree. I think those bevels are like they're 15, 20 degrees maybe. But right now I've kind of got all of these sanded down with exception. I got one more to do. But next phase will be gluing them together. I brought this glue out here. But since this is rosin, I'm going to use some super glue that I picked up at the auto parts store. Uh, let me finish doing this like this one. I just got like see these little, well, I trimmed those off with the nippers. They still got a little bit of something. And basically this sandpaper right here in this block does the trick because it keeps it nice and square. Here's one of the pieces that I've done. I've got everything sanded. On the bottom into the little these little pieces of flash and whatever got cut off and sanded but if you notice right here in some of these areas you can see where I sanded it roughly like there on the ends on the back side of this thing especially here and I've done that on several of the pieces and those are areas where I'm going to have to apply the glue. And I found when doing these DPM kits, actually I do it on all kits, is to sand that a little bit. It gives it a little bit of tooth because it's a little bit of shininess right here. If I have my finger that's on it on the back side, it's a little slick. And it's a little bit, eh, the glue don't quite set on it as easy as it does where if you sand it, give it a little tooth for it, the glue to grab into, especially the super glue. And it also, <clears throat> on like normal styrene kits, it gives it an extra little bit of place to dig in and dissolve some of the plastic. But since this is a rosin kit, I don't normally use that plastic cement because it doesn't work as good as the super glue. All right, well, I'm going to take a break a little bit here, grab me a sandwich and and a cold drink and I'm probably gonna set up my camera get figure out set up one of my cameras while I glue this thing together so there you have it there's the part one of the video of the of the series that I'm doing so get ready for part two it'll be coming out pretty quick too uh, it'll have some some things different more putting it together things in it uh, like I said, I'm kind of new, kind of getting this few videos going. Just let me know in the comments what you think, and maybe some suggestions of how I could improve the sale and build if I do another one. I got, so I've learned some things too that I think I'd rather do than just sit down and just film the whole thing. 
All right, thanks. <laughs>